Hey there, today we're going to take a look at Nest.js microservices. We're going to set up a sample application that includes an API gateway that uh, a client can talk to. And then we're going to connect two separate microservices to this gateway. So we're going to need three separate Nest.js projects for this. So in your command line, in whichever folder that you'd like to work in, make sure you run Nest new. And then we'll start with our API gateway. So this will be a sample backend is what we'll call it. Uh, and I will include the link to the GitHub repo for this project in the description as always, as well as a link to the microservices doc. So once that's done, we're gonna do nest new, and then now we're gonna include our first microservices, which we'll call sample communication. And this microservice will represent some sort of communications-based service that uh, would email or text or really any form of communication uh, that we want to handle to our users. And the last project will create nest new sample analytics. So this will be a microservice that handles analytics for our application. So once we finish initializing our projects, I've opened the sample backend up in VS Code. And I'm going to actually go to file and then add folder to workspace. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the sample analytics and then i'll do the same thing for the sample communication so now all three of our projects are in one vs code project and then we can save this workspace so first off let's go ahead and set up our analytics service to connect as a microservice so to start off let's go ahead and set up our sample communication project as a microservice so our first thing we need to do is open up the terminal for sample communication and make sure we add yarn add at nest.js microservices now nest.js offers us a number of different transports that we can use to connect our microservices by default, the transport's TCP, which is what we're going to use. So for this microservice, we're not going to be listening uh, for any HTTP connections. We're not going to expose it to the outside world. In the other microservice, I'll show you how we can do both. But for now, we're only going to want to set up a TCP microservice that will be listening for events and messages uh, from other services. So we'll create an app here, and then we'll call await nest factory dot create microservice we're going to pass in microservice options here and now we need to pass in the app module as we normally would and then a set of options in this case we're going to specify the transport that we're going to use and here you can see the list of different transports that are accepted so we're going to use tcp for this example and then lastly we need to call app dot listen and that's all we need to do to set this microservice up so now that we've connected our sample communication project Let's go back up to our sample backend, which is acting as our API gateway. And by that, I mean this is the actual project that will receive uh, API requests from clients and then dispatch uh, different events and messages to these different microservices. This way, we really only need to expose one central API or an API gateway to our clients. Now, just as we've done before, we're going to open up a terminal for the sample backend and we'll have to add the microservices package from nest.js now the main ts will stay as the same as it always is but now in the app module what we're going to do is in the import section we need to register something called the clients module from nest.js microservices and we're going to call register on it and what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to inject uh, a number of services that are that our actual application can use to dispatch events and messages to the microservices. So let's see this in action. For example, let's hook up the communication service that we just created. So we can provide any name. This can be any name. All this will represent is the injection token that we'll use later on. So in this case, I'm calling it communication. Uh, to represent the communication service. Next, we need to specify the transport. So we know, in this case, the transport is TCP. And now we can actually use this in our app code to communicate with our services. So let's do just that. In our app controller, I'm gonna actually create a new route here. And this will be a post route, and we're gonna call it create user. So we're gonna take in a create user body. Let's quickly just create a create user request DTO. And we can export a class here create user request and we're going to have an email and password that come in 
over the network as two strings. So now in our app controller, we can specify the body here. We know it'll be the create user request of type create user request. So now that we have this DTO, we can specify to our app service uh, that we want to handle this. So, so in our app service, we're gonna go ahead and have a create user method. It's also going to take the create user request. In our app service, just to make things simple, uh, we can have an in-memory in database here. So I'll have an in-memory array of users, type any. So this will be an empty array here. And simply we can just push uh, the create user request to this array. So basically we are just allowing uh, the API request to come in and add to this array, pretty basic stuff. But now what I wanna do is emit an event to our communication service telling it that the user has been created so that it can go ahead and handle different actions like maybe sending an email to the user, sending them a text message, allowing them to subscribe, any number of concerns that really are beyond simple CRUD operations and we wanna keep clean and separate. So to do this, we're gonna use that injection token we created earlier. So we're gonna call inject here and specify that injection token so we know it's the communication string that we specified and this will be private read only. You can call it the communication client. And this is gonna be of type client proxy from Nest.js microservices. So now that we have this communication client in create user, we can specify that we want to emit an event when the user is created. So we can specify a pattern here, which is really just a string literal that uh, will specify the event that we're emitting. And then we can specify uh, a payload, a data payload. So I'll go ahead and create a new event. I'm gonna call this create user.event. And all this is gonna be is just an object here uh, that is really just gonna take the email. We don't wanna specify the password over the network. All we're concerned about is the user's email that was just created. So we have this new event and we can use it now. So specify a new create user create user event and then of course we'll pass in the email from the create user request so now after we're creating the user we're emitting this event uh, to our microservice so in our app controller make sure we actually call this app service dot create user and pass in the request and so now back in our communication microservice we need to wire things up to listen for this event. So our controller acts as the entry point for all communication in the app. And it will be the same for events and messages in this architecture. So we'll add a decorator here called event pattern. And now we specify the pattern to which we wanna listen for. And of course we know this is the user created uh, event pattern. And then we can say we want to handle user created. So this is the event that we are responding to. And we know that we're gonna get a data payload here. And this is gonna be the same event, create user.event. And we can simply copy over the other event we've created and paste it in here because we know the payload will be the same. So we can say a create user event is what's being transferred over the wire. And now we have access to this event. So in our app service, we'll create another method called handle user created, which will take the data and of course, you know, this is the create user event. And now in here, uh, let's simply just log out uh, in here saying this is the handle user created method in the communication service and we'll log out the data. And maybe we could add it to do here for later in the future, or if it's something you'd want to implement, we could email the user and welcome them to our service. So in the app controller, we'll have to make sure we call handle user created and pass in the data. So now back in our terminal, you wanna make sure we're running yarn start dev in both the sample backend so we can listen for API requests and do the same for the sample communication app. Now, once those have both started up, we can open up Postman and we can make a post request to HTTP localhost 3000, which is where our API gateway is listening for. Uh, and our default post route is the create user route. So we can specify that body with the email and password and send off a few different requests here, changing the email and password. And then if we go take a look at our communication service, we can see that it is correctly logging out 
for each request that comes into our backend, we're sending the handle user created event and the communication service is correctly responding. You can see it log out the event here. So nice work with that basic example. Let's go ahead and now set up our last microservice, the analytics service. So this will be a hybrid application that is a microservice and it will also listen for HTTP requests. So as we've done before, let's open up the sample analytics project. And of course we'll have to add nest.js slash microservices. Once that finishes, we can open up the main.ts. Now this main.ts file setup will be a bit different because we are actually going to keep this bit of code here where we create the nest factory and we listen. However, I'm gonna change this port to 3001 because our sample backend is already listening on port 3000. So we don't want those to conflict. And now what we're actually gonna do is we can call app.connect microservice. And here we can specify the transport. This will be transport.tcp. And additionally, we need to specify an options object here. And this is because we already have our communication service listening on port 3000. So we don't want those to conflict either. We'll have to specify a separate port here. So now we're gonna tell it to listen on port 3001 for this microservice. So now in addition to calling app.listen, we need to call await app start all microservices. So now we've created a hybrid application that both has a microservice connected and it's listening for HTTP requests. Now, in order to make use of the request response based microservice communication pattern, uh, I wanna set up another event pattern here that also responds to user created events. So as we've done before, we can simply specify the event pattern and say that we want to respond to user created events in our app controller here. So this will look very similar to the method we've already created. We'll have a piece of data and we'll have to specify the create user event. So make sure we paste this in the create user event with just the email and back in the app controller, we can use this here, the create user event. And now in our app service, let's go implement this. Uh, and so instead of just logging things out, we're actually going to uh, maintain an array here that we can use for our analytics and our request response uh, pattern. So I'm going to declare a read-only array here called analytics and it'll be of type any and set it to an empty array. So now in our handle user created method, we'll take in the data. We know it's the, the create user event and we can of course still log out as we've done before to make sure things are working as expected. But then I also want to push to our analytics array. I want to push an object where we'll include the email from the request, but also I want to just include the timestamp. So this will maybe be some fake analytics data. We know exactly when the user was created and maybe we could uh, send this to some sort of external server, anything you would do to maintain some analytics. So now in here, we will reach out to the app service and pass in the data. So as we've done before, we're gonna to need to hook this up into our API gateway. So open up the app module in the sample backend again. And as we've done before, we'll have to specify a, a different object here in the clients module. So in this case, we'll have a new name for our injection token. I'll call it analytics. Of course, we'll specify the transport, which we know is TCP. And now since the port is different, we'll specify an options object and specify the port at 3001. So in the app service, let's go ahead and paste the same line here. We'll have to change this client proxy to be of type analytics here for our injection token. And then of course, change the name. We'll call this analytics client. And the in create user event, I wanna now emit two events, one to the communication client and one to the analytics client. So finally, as we've done well with our other microservice, make sure you CD into the sample analytics folder and run yarn start dev to start this service up. And now if we fire off another create user request, we should see our analytics handler comment or log out the payload here, just as we do uh, in the communications service. So finally, let's go ahead and implement an example with a request and a response to our services. So in our sample backend, what I want to do is create a new route here. This is going to be a simple get route. 
uh, with the name analytics. We are going to call this get analytics. So we're going to proxy this off to our analytics service. So in our app service, I'll add a new method here called get analytics. And all this is going to do is proxy off to our analytics client. And we're going to send a command. So this is going to be similar to our event. It's going to be an object uh, which will be matched to whichever service we send to. So we'll add an object with a command key and we'll just simply call this get analytics. Uh, and the payload will be an empty object. We don't need to include any data for this request. Now, importantly, this uh, request here, this send method, it returns what's known as a cold observable. So only when your code subscribes to this call will the message actually get sent. Thankfully, uh, Nest.js, when you uh, return an observable from a controller route, it's automatically subscribed to and the result is returned to the client. So we can simply call get analytics from our controller here and everything should work as expected. So let's go back into our analytics controller. And as we've done with our event pattern, we're going to need to specify a new decorator here called message pattern, where instead of the just the string, we're going to specify the whole pattern. So this is the object with the command. And of course, we just set this up. It's called get analytics. So we can now actually implement this method, which has been proxied on from our back end API gateway. And we will call this dot app service and implement a simple method in here. Uh, we'll call it get analytics. And all this is going to do is return this dot analytics, very simple. So we can just call get analytics. And so now after we go ahead and create a few more users, hopefully see that uh, the analytics service is being updating the analytics array. So now if we call our backend with the analytics route and call get, we can see this data that has been returned from the analytics service, the list of emails with the timestamp. And additionally, uh, our analytics service also has an HTTP server. So let's make sure that's working okay on port 3001. If we simply call the normal get route, we can see the basic HTTP response, hello world. So this has been a very basic example of Nest.js microservices. Uh, for my next video, I'm going to show you how you can deploy a Nest.js application using Kubernetes. So if you'd like to see that, make sure you subscribe, uh, like the video and leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.